How did y'all go from being the Holy Trinity to being the three wise men of the apocalypse? Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie for those who don't know me and we're gonna talk about all the Love is Bind spoilers, the sleuthing that's been happening on social media in this video. I, I, I decided to just put it all together I feel like that makes the most sense. I'll put it in chapters as well. If you don't really care for everybody, you just want your specific uh, people to hear about. And uh, yeah, before we get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. The time right now is 4.51 on Friday. I don't think there's gonna be anything else to drop before I post this. Um, if there is, I genuinely will be shocked. Also, this happened last year, so I have to make it clear this year, you see the title, it says spoilers. There are absolutely going to be details that allude to spoilers in this video. This is your time to close the video and choose something else to watch. I've given you the warning. I don't want to hear the complaint in the comments. But let's start with the, with the, with the light stuff and then get to the, uh, the bombs. We're gonna start with Matt. So Matt wanted to speak out on social media because he did not like how he was being portrayed on the show. Just a reminder, I do know that a lot of people wanna come and dispel anything that's been said or done on the show. But when you sign up for reality TV, everybody must know you are giving your story to them to manipulate in any way they see fit. So just be cognizant of that. If you're not happy with how you're being portrayed, you sign those rights away when you sign that contract. So this is what he had to say. Key element of my story that was never disclosed is that I live an alcohol-free lifestyle and did the experiment sober. It was a key factor in why I had so much difficulty connecting with women in the beginning. There was also many misrepresentations and falsehoods created in my opinion, to smear my character. Look forward to telling my side of the story with the full truth at the appropriate time. He also wanted to make it be known that he never walked out on any of the girls while he was um, in the pods, as in while they were talking. So if he was actively being spoken to, he never got up and left the pod. This is what he says, okay? So next, I just wanted to show some opinions that some of the cast have been saying. I haven't gotten everybody's um, social media. I don't know what they've all been saying on TikTok, but some people just decided to speak out to clear their name. AD explains why she was annoyed when Clay was eating soup via Instagram. Check out this clip. Well, it was awkward, one. Um, what you guys have to understand is this is the first time Clay and I actually sat down face to face and had a meal together. So it's not like I didn't want him to enjoy his food. I, why would I want him to enjoy his food? I'm happy he enjoyed his meal. But again, that was our first time sitting down face to face eating a meal. So when you go on a first date and somebody slurps down soup like that, <laughs> give me a call and tell me how you react. Of course, I want him to enjoy his food. Also, somebody was like, oh, it's perfectly normal to stack dishes. Who said it wasn't? I used to be a server. Okay, who said it wasn't? Everybody take it easy. All I said was, I'm glad you're loving it or whatever the heck I said. Come on, everybody, not too much. <laughs> I didn't think she was getting any backlash from the, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm not in her DM, so I don't know. I didn't think she would get any backlash from that just because the way he was scarfing it down, I was looking at him the same way, like, sir, have you not eaten today? Like, what's going on? What, what's happening? And the stacking plates thing, that's something that a lot of people do. So it's surprising that some people thought that she took issue to that. Now, I also saw this video where somebody was kind of making fun of Clay regarding Clay and uh, AD's whole interaction, she retweeted it or reposted it, sorry. So my assumption is maybe they're not together. I'm really, okay, it's, it's not, I'm really good. I'm really good. I just feel like I there's a lot of thinking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, And I'm just trying to like make sure that like I am really thinking about yeah. all of my choices because sometimes I don't think about my choices and I, I do yeah. think about cheating on you in the present and future and I don't yeah. really want to cheat on you because I think if I cheat on you it's like damn I really had the opportunity to be with like a right. really bad bitch who would have fat ass but I really gotta you know I just really gotta think and like right. I think to myself like damn AD <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> like AD yeah. all day 
Uh, but yeah, so yeah. I'm just really in my head, just weighing options, thinking about my dad. Mm-hmm. My dad did cheat on my mom a lot. So mm-hmm. when I'm thinking about my mom, I'm thinking about you, I'm thinking about my mm-hmm. dad, I'm thinking about Will Smith, I'm thinking about P. Diddy. Yeah. All those people make who I am. And so I just really, I, I'm just thinking, right. but I'm really, I really am good. Like, it's us. Like, I'm so happy, baby. Right. Baby. Like, I am so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really, I, <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> I love you, baby. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. A.D. I'm all okay. day. Moving on. Let's talk about Kenneth very quickly. Not too much to say about him. Honestly, the church girl trauma when it comes to Kenneth is just... Wow. Rising up to the surface. Okay. Kenneth, as we know, decided to end things with, what's her name? I wanted to say Amber for a second. That's not it. What's her name? Chelsea. No, Brittany. Brittany. Not me already forgetting them. So he ended things with Brittany. According to Brittany in an interview that she did, I did not watch the whole interview, but what I'm seeing on social media is that she actually initiated the breakup. So they did some creative editing with that one. She also said that the phone actually wasn't an issue, which I don't think we took it as the biggest issue. For me, it was the lack of intentionality when it came to Kenneth. And unfortunately, the phone just seemed to be a part of that, you know? Also, she had said the reason why she says identify a lot is because she meant it as a matter of fact, not as if it could be something that's fluid, but... Kenneth used to always say, I am a black man. So she in return would say he identifies as a black man, as in it's a matter of fact, rather than there's something else that he could identify as. Making sense? I hope so. So somebody was really listening intently to Kenneth and I don't know if I hear babe, but apparently after the breakup, he was referring to somebody as babe. Now, I don't know if he said bae or not, but it sounds a lot like babe. It sounds a lot like babe. Interesting. And I would love to know why Love is Blind chose to emphasize the phone so much. Because for me, my thought was always, who are you texting? Who is so important that you need to keep checking up on during this process? I'm not understanding. Sure, he had his own issues with, um, is- who the hell is Isabel? What is this girl's name? <laughs> Brittany. <sighs> he had his own issues with Brittany, uh, attraction wise, I'm assuming, the race thing, obviously. Some people are speculating there's other reasons. I'm not gonna get into it. It's not really my place. So I don't know, but babe? We need an answer on that one for sure. Moving on. As you guys have seen, it was even picked up by The Shade Room, okay? I didn't know that they cover um, Love is Blind, but Chelsea, Chelsea's speaking out about a few things, okay? She says that she's a big personality. She has big reactions to things. Um, The Megan Fox thing, she needs people to speak up because um, she definitely has heard it, but this is her giving her take on this season so far. I wasn't going to do it, but it needs to be done. (laughs) So obviously there's a lot to unpack with this most recent drop. It's been super, super loud, obviously. Um, (laughs) So yeah, let's just get to it. (laughs) I need everyone to just understand that this is just such a unique experience. And if you don't give your all, then you're not gonna, you're cheating yourself and you're cheating everyone else in this situation. Um, I am a very emotional person. I will never apologize for being emotional, ever. I feel emotions big and I get excited and I get mad and I get sad and I just, I feel it big and I will never apologize. I love that about myself and that's something that I'm getting a lot of hate for is when I get excited, how cringy it is. That's me, baby. That is me. If you don't like it, then fast forward, okay? Another thing that y'all are loving, dragging me through the trenches for is being insecure. That is something that I have struggled with in the past. It's been, um, you know, an issue that I really had to do a lot of work to overcome. And I need you guys to understand too, this was a year ago. So, 
you know, a lot can change in a year. I still think that everyone struggles with a little bit of insecurity. This is such a crazy experience that you're thrown into and you're trying to figure out if you're going to marry this person. Of course, my insecurities are going to be heightened. I just don't understand why nobody's understanding. Yes, I am, you know, I'm big in my emotions. I struggled with insecurity on the show. I'm a new bitch. Lastly, y'all, I have a therapist, okay? <laughs> For the love of God. <laughs> with that being said, I just have to extend just the amount of love I've been getting and I just I see you guys I hear you I appreciate you and stay tuned because I'm sure I'm gonna be crying again very soon I love that she's been getting a lot of love we need that in this life and she's right we all deal with insecurities to some degree I think what's grating on the public myself included a lot in regards to Chelsea is it's almost like she moves the goalposts, you know? She'll be like, I want you to see me in this way. I want you to affirm me in this way. And then once Jimmy would do it, she still had issues with it. So it's like, okay, so girl, what do you want? Because when he gives you what you want, you don't believe him. When he doesn't give you what you want, you complain about it. Like, what's the solution if you're that kind of person? She says that she's in therapy and she was in therapy, it seemed, when she was on the show. So um, I don't know, maybe in the year, a lot has changed. Feel how you feel. I feel like people who have big feelings, that's your prerogative. But just know that it's definitely an acquired taste. And a lot of us don't have the palate for it. <laughs> just, just being honest. This girl went on TikTok to claim that one of her, no, that her boyfriend, sorry, not one of her boyfriends, her boyfriend is on the show. Now she didn't name names, but people are assuming based on what she's saying that she's talking about Jimmy. Imagine my fucking surprise when I turn on the new season of Love is Blind this morning and see my fucking boyfriend. Yeah. Are you shocked? Because I sure as hell am. I feel like I'm experiencing such a wide range of emotions, heartbreak, jealousy, shock, rage. Why the fuck is my man on TV? And why the fuck is he on a dating show talking to other women? Obviously, I'm not going to tell you who it is. I still think he's the love of my life. And we can work past this. So like, I'm not going to say his name, but holy fuck. This is just how I'm feeling right now. I literally watched the first episode. I had to turn it off because I was literally just staring at the screen like, hello? Hello? As an avid reality TV show watcher, I see this happen all the time with girls where they're like, that's my man on TV. How did this happen? And I'm like, well, that's kind of embarrassing. How did you not know? And now it's happening to me. Of course, he's in this pod talking to beautiful women. For all I know, I thought he was on a fucking business trip. He couldn't talk to me because he was working. Come to find out you're dating other people? Are you fucking kidding me? He's talking to this woman who has a child. I can't compete with that and she's stunning. Do I keep watching this season? Do I say something to him? I haven't seen him or spoken to him about this. I just don't know what I'm supposed to do and I feel like all I can do right now is just like talk about how I'm feeling and I'm just so hurt and I don't know where to go from here. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't know this woman. I've never met this woman. It's not true. I gotta give it to her. It's an incredible marketing ploy. She is getting so many clicks and she's making so much money off my name. It is insane. She doesn't say it's me, but she's definitely insinuating it's your boy. I've had so many people send this to me and I wasn't going to address it, but at this point I feel like I need to. I think she's running at about 16 million right now, which is absolutely insane to me and bizarre it's getting that much traction so i wanted to come on here and tell everybody it's not true also if you go watch it and you give her another click and another view please report it obviously just one crazy thing that's happened this past week for me but i do want to say i love all the positivity and all the comments that i am getting okay so there you have it so shout out to um is it story time with ricky we love ricky over here we love ricky over here honey ricky always comes with the tea Shout out to you, Ricky. Uh, Jimmy says he don't know that girl. He don't know her. She's out here for clout. It's nothing new for people to come out with stories that have absolutely no merit to them. He claims he does not know this woman whatsoever. She's probably, I don't know. I don't know what she wanted. But here's the thing. You really have to come with receipts, especially if you're trying to slander somebody's character. Did I say everything here is a legend? Honey, everything here is a legend. 
everything is allegedly allegedly from the things I said before I said allegedly and everything that I say after, okay? <laughs> You're not gonna get me. So um, you gotta come with receipts, baby. And there are some people who have receipts. So before we get to the, the real tea, okay? Jessica was seen out with Harry Jousey. Apparently this happened back in September. They thought it was somebody else when they reported. So Harry was the main, you know, he was the focal point of the story. But now people are confirming that it was Jessica from Love is Blind. So look at what we have here. It looks like our girl Jess from Love is Blind season six, you know, the one that got jilted by Jimmy, one we all were rooting for, got bit by the Harry Jousey bug. There, you want a better shot? Don't worry, I got one. That is definitely our girl Jess. That is Heartbreak Harry live in the flesh, taking a dip in the motherfucking blue ocean. And here they are sharing a kiss. Why does Harry get all the bad bitches? There ain't been a bad bitch yet that he ain't cracked down. You know what, Jess? You got jilted by Jimmy. We all felt so bad for you. But this just gives that you make poor life decisions. Because why the fuck would you hook up with Harry Josie? Heartbreak Harry. Hitta and quitta. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we all know that he's a class fucking act. You know, that he would post a cookie that says I love MILFs on his profile. Wouldn't be surprised if he's the one who leaked these pictures. There's so many other men in the world. Anyway, we know that both Harry and Jessica are going to be on The Perfect Match Season 2. It filmed five months ago, and it's going to air on Netflix in about April. So it's that's clearly where they met. They may have even won The Perfect Match. And if you try and convince me that Harry Jousey is anybody's perfect match, I'm just going to throw my phone. The interesting thing about this is when we were on live, some of you guys were saying that you believe that Jessica is a producer plant. I can walk with you guys on that one, especially after seeing this, because who, I mean, well... What I was going to say was going to sound rude. I was going to say, who is Jessica? <laughs> no, but like, we didn't know her before, but maybe she had a, a, a strong following before coming on the show. So, you know, um, or maybe they just knew each other. As I'm editing this video is the first time that I'm seeing Ricky's video in full. I will be honest about that. So I didn't know that she's already on the perfect match and it was filmed five months ago. So them being spotted together in September makes complete sense. But also this adds insult to injury regarding the Trevor story that's about to come up. Just keep that in mind because we do know he's also on the perfect match. She didn't have to be an influencer for him to want to date her. He could date, you know, Sally from across the street. That's totally fine. But yeah, it was Jessica. So interesting according to somebody else's page i wish i remember their name i don't i'm so sorry but they had said that these two no longer follow each other and since this happened back in september maybe it was just a fling it does kind of fuel the whole netflix producer plant situation i can absolutely see her being casted for either that games thing that netflix did that just did not go anywhere or the perfect match absolutely I definitely see her being on either one of those shows. Moving on, Mr. Jeremy. So the story with Jeremy is that he was engaged at the time of applying to the show. Now he denies actually applying. He says that he was reached out to and he provides receipts. He says that he was reached out to and he had already been single for a little while. But here's the tea on Jeremy. You guys, the tea is piping fucking hot tonight because allegedly Jeremy applied to be on Love is Blind season six while he was engaged. The ex-fiance's mom just posted this photo in a Facebook group. There's Jeremy, there's the ex-fiance, and there's the ring. Let me tell you what I know. So upon digging through the millions and millions of comments, somebody said, where did you find this? And the mom said, in my phone, that's my daughter and grandson. Mom then goes on to give more details and say, he just moved out at the end of 2022. They filmed February or March in 2023. They had just sold their home. So you guys remember that little scene where Jeremy is telling Laura that he sold his previous house and didn't buy a new house because he wanted like his new wife to like pick where he lived. Yeah, he failed to mention that house he just sold was with his ex-fiance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
The mom then again says, Jenny, that's the mom. She says they are absolutely not together since selling their house in 2023. And this is the ex-fiance under Laura's photos saying, did he ever tell you about his ex-fiance from right before you? Surely not. Or the house we sold a week or two before he filmed for this show. Just want all the info out there. You and Sarah Ann should know. I'm happy to share proof. I did message her. Y'all know I did. So she also goes on to say, peep the video of Layla and him in the snow on his Instagram. That was at our house. And that's me recording the video and talking. So it appears that they had just broken up right before he went to film Love is Blind. So technically he was single when he filmed the show, but he was still living with his fiance when he applied for the show. Cause you have to take into consideration. It takes time to get casted. You apply and then you go through the whole casting process. And that's basically what the mom is saying. Someone was engaged in living with somebody when he applied for the show, not when he filmed the show. The story that's going around about my previous engagement prior to Love is Blind. Um, one, anybody that I was on dates with, my castmates and in multiple interviews, this topic was discussed. Nobody is surprised by this. It was something that was well documented. Unfortunately, with all of the footage that is captured, not all of it makes it into the final cut. This just happened to not make it in there. Two, I did not apply for this while I was living with anybody else. I was out living on my own and I didn't seek this out. I was actually reached out to over Instagram and I'll actually add that message into the next slide just for some verification on that. But I had already been out on my own for a number of weeks at that point and I was asked if I would like to have a discussion around it. I said, sure, why not? So like I said, Jeremy um, says that he was single for weeks. He was living on his own for weeks. <laughs> ah, the thing is, mm, I mean, it's not up to us to say how long it takes for somebody to move on from a relationship. But if you were engaged to somebody who had a child, I would assume that was a very serious situation. And in a few weeks, you decided to go on a show where in another few weeks, you're going to be married to somebody else. Sketchy. Sketchy. Mm, very sketchy. Let's stick on them for a little bit because people have been going hard at Sarah Ann. I can only imagine what kind of DMs she's getting. And she decided to give us a little glimpse on what's been going on in the private messages. Skinny, fat body, bitch. You ping pong paddle body bitch. Use a taco body bitch. Johnny Bravo body bitch. Weird shape body bitch. Silverback eight skinny fat. What is so strange to me is people are literally in my DMs like, girl, you're laughing. You're proud. I would never be proud of something like that. You can't bring someone down that knows what did and did not happen. Like, I can laugh at it and what you're saying about me because... I was there and I know the truth and soon you will know the truth. Golly. This is a reality television. It is meant to entertain you. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. We didn't miss with this one, baby. We didn't miss. So um, I appreciate all the comments, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever. At some point, there will be a lot of clarification. Everyone will get to tell their side of the story and we'll all be able to talk about it. But until then, continue watching. Thank you for watching. And anyone that is in support of me, I love you. Thank you. Ah. The taco body bitch. Johnny Bravo body bitch. What happened to Shane? What happened to the NDA? Sarah Ann posting this TikTok from Jeremy's house is fucking crazy. I saw this and I had to get back on my Netflix. I had to go back to the episode where we saw Jeremy's bedroom. There's his dresser and there's his bull poster above the dresser. And look at the corner here. Same dresser, same poster. Posting this no shame is crazy. When I tell you the TikTok, what did, what did I call y'all? Um, the TikTok investigative task force, unmatched. Unma I would have never thought to put two and two together and see that she could potentially be at Jeremy's house. The ability to pay so much attention to these minute details baffles me every time. Every single time. Child, I hope I never get caught in a lie because y'all don't play y'all don't play but yeah um i mean ease up on the on the threats and stuff guys it's a reality show come on let's let's 
detach from TV and attach ourselves to real life. It's never that deep, but y'all were on it. Y'all were on it. So let's move on to um, arguably the biggest blind side to y'all. Because what did I say about Trevor? I don't buy nothing that man is selling me. So I can't tell you what it was, but something in my spirit was saying, I can't trust Trevor. And it seems like none of us should. So at first, Trevor was presenting himself as this nice guy on social media. You know, the whole, oh, nice guys finish last. He spoke about his dog and it's a sad story, but it leans into this whole, I'm the nice guy, woe is me story that he's trying to paint around himself. It was ironic that Chelsea had the same name as my dog. And in the scene where we present gifts to each other, um, they told us to bring a gift and then they told us to bring a personal item that was close to us back home. So when I give her the collar, I'm not really gifting it to her. Um, I was just showing her something that was close to my heart from my home experiences. But the reason that I brought my dog's collar is actually because she had cancer at the time. And um, ironically and devastatingly, when I got back home, my mom was watching her at the time when I was filming and I got back home and she had passed away. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know this at all and I think this is crazy irony and kind of would have made for a really good like ending to things but she the day she passed away was the day that Chelsea ended things with me in the pods um so production didn't know that nobody really knows that until because I didn't find out till I left the show and got back home but yeah I just thought that that was a crazy sad story and I wanted to get it off my chest so the video that I just played for you since been deleted I don't know why. I don't know why. It could be the fact that he was really trying to lean into this whole look at me, I'm the nice guy. But um, yeah, it has since been deleted. So the reality, Ashley, she was the first one who reported it. And shout out to everybody who sent me DMs because I'm, I'm highlighting the content creators, but I saw a lot of this stuff from you guys. So shout out to you guys as well. The reality Ashley um, has the receipts. We are gonna read the text messages <laughs> between Trevor and um, Ms. Girl. Let me open this full screen because y'all know sometimes when it's late at night, I struggle to read. It's not even late at night. I just struggle to read, end of story, okay? So here we go. Whew, I'm assuming the gray is Trevor. Yeah. I love you so much, honey. I'm excited for it, but more excited to get back to you and start our life together. Did you get my text? She says. Did you land? He said. Just did. She said. Did you find other people on the plane doing the show? Oh! Girl, not you in cahoots. <laughs> he said. The guy. Ah, uh, first. I think it's I. The guy I first asked, though, talked to me the whole time and established why we are here and agreed on it. She said, and what was that? He said, no matter what, we are not getting married, LOL. She said, nice. Who's the guy? Who's the guy? Is it Jeremy? Is it Jeremy? Who's the guy? Child, anyways, let's move forward. What is the next text? He said, Nala, do you still love me? She said, pumpkin, I'm crying. He said, can I call you in 30 minutes? She said, I miss you so much. What a weird conversation. Let me move on. He said, I love you more than anything in this world. And I'm going to marry. Uh! By the way, guys, I have not read the text messages. I'm going to marry you. She said, yes, call me. And then also said, I can't wait. By the way, guys, these texts are about um, March, April time last year he said proposing oh something's cut off but anyways proposing but she left me on the last day for another guy her name was chelsea chelsea also passed away today shout out to the dog rest in peace she said i don't want i, I didn't want the first thing i texted you to be 
call your mom. But it was yesterday. I talked to her a couple times. She's doing okay. He said, I talked to her, but yeah, the girl who was my final match was named Chelsea and I gave her Chelsea's collar as my item. She said, this is very cute. He said, I hope you know how much I love you and had to pretend that I wanted <laughs> that this wasn't real life to say anything I said. So he had to convince himself that he was just acting. And she said, it's okay, pumpkin. All right, moving forward. She said, something is cut off, so sorry. My stomach, because I feel like I've lost my best friend. However, I feel that you already know what you want based on your silence. So I'm prepared for the worst. You have made me wait seven days without speaking a word to me. You can wait till tomorrow. I will text you in the morning. He said, I don't wanna have this talk. Why would you wanna hear what I have to say after I've treated you like this all week? She said, because I want you to give me the respect I deserve instead of treating me like this. Wait, so this is now in February. Why are we going back in time? I'm confused, but let's move on. He said, I do respect you. I wouldn't intentionally ruin things and push you away if I didn't know that you deserve 10 times better than me. Not you deserve better. Whenever somebody tells you that you deserve better, it's because you do. It is absolutely because you do. Leave that person man or woman. Anyways, I think, um, I think tea time with Ricky had one, a really good text. Hold on. That I had to screenshot. Where is it? So the last text that was shown between Trevor and this Nala girl is, well, good news for me, at least Chelsea is still on the show. If she wasn't, I'd have no chance of being shown. I just want to say that I feel vindicated for a few reasons. One, because I said I didn't trust Trevor. Something about Trevor, I wasn't trusting all the way. But secondly, when the man was talking about this love star, again, who's the fifth person? I don't know. But when he was talking about this love star, to me, it felt like he was trying to strategically place himself to stay on the show. He was trying to corroborate stories. He was trying to do a little matchmaker to make sure everybody had their own little connection so that they could all proceed in the show. Some of you guys thought that I was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Some of you guys were with me. So shout out to y'all. Um, Trevor. And this is why nice guys finish last because nice guys oftentimes are pretending. Find yourself a good guy. As if things couldn't have gotten worse, I should have known. I'm a YouTuber, like girl. I should have recorded this video Saturday morning because more tea has dropped on Trevor. Nala has spoken out on her Instagram. The question was, has Trevor contacted you since you outed him as trash? The response was, he tried to call me yesterday morning before everything came out. I had to block his number because I was afraid of the, of the potential backlash and prior threats he made towards me for coming forward. Ooh! He blocked me on IG this morning child not the threats there's another question saying what was trevor hoping to gain fame money attention she says yes to all all of the things that come with being reality tv reality show famous he's already filmed perfect match too wowzers and then the last question is uh you're strong i'm sorry this happened to you when did you guys break up the response he ghosted me for seven days, about three weeks before the show aired. Ooh, three weeks before it aired. Wow. And then broke up with me when he returned home from work about two weeks before the show aired. Stop it. Oh, so in that message when I said it was in February, was that February of this year or last? Wait, nah. Wait, nah. Oh, that was this February. So the messages back and forth about him saying you deserve better was this February, was a few weeks ago. Oh, Trevor, you bad boy. So with that being said, that's the tea online. Let me know what you expected, what you didn't expect, what other tea that you've seen online. Um, I will keep saying there has been something going around about Kenneth and honesty. I'm going to be more diligent about it in my comments below. Some of the things that, that have been said about, um, Kenneth 
sexuality and Chelsea's appearance, guys, nah. Like, it's it's so unnecessary. Um, basically, people are assuming that Kenneth swings the other way. People are making fun of Chelsea being a plus size woman. It's unnecessary. It really is unnecessary. Like, let's talk about the show. Let's kiki about that stuff. I, I have said things that do kind of allude to people's attraction, but um, it, it's a slippery slope to turn into bullying. And even though we're not on their pages, we still need to be, you know, um, we still need to be responsible with our own platform. So that's on me. I'll police it a little bit more, but I just need to tell y'all what the business is because we don't, we don't want to be bullies, okay? We don't want to be bullies. We just want to have fun and talk about the show. But anyways... Yeah, a lot has been going on on social media, honey. This third drop is going to be something special. And then the reunion, guys, the reunion. I'm ready. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.